Hi guys, it's John here with another benchmark comparison between the Exynos 2200 and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. So here in this video we have the latest September update installed and I know it's October at the moment but the Snapdragon didn't get its update until about the 29th or 30th of September and I've been a bit busy since then so I haven't had a chance to actually record this until now so I will put the version numbers of the firmware on the screen so you can just compare to your own but as always we have the Exynos here on the left and the Snapdragon on the right. So we'll start off with the Geekbench CPU test and we'll see how they both compare. Now do bear in mind that it is nearly winter in the UK now so things are cooler in the room or the office that I'm working in here so you'll notice that the temperatures on both phones are a lot lower than the previous month. Okay, so we can see here in all three tests, there isn't a huge amount of difference really compared to last month's. Exynos has got a slight increase of about a percent or two. And the Snapdragon, again, minus 1% and plus 1%, so it's not really much between the two at all still. We can see, however, as the running trend is continuing, that the Snapdragon is still better with its single core with an average score of 1204, and the Exynos is still better with its multi-cores with an average score of 3253. So moving on to the Geekbench Compute scores as well here, we can see again not much has changed. There's just under 4% increase on the Exynos and a slight decrease of 2% on the Snapdragon, so nothing really there between the two compared to last month. But as always, as we know, the compute on the Exynos has always been better than the Snapdragon and it shows still in this test here with a score of 8228 versus 6035. So next up is the Antutu benchmark and I put version 9.4.4 here on the test because that is what shows in the app. Even though I've downloaded the 9.4.8 version, it's still showing as 9.4.4 in the app. So I'm going to leave it as that, but it is the latest version that I could download from the website. So 
I'm not quite sure if they just have an updated the version number there, but uh, that's not too important anyway. We can see, however, in the cooler temperature of the UK here, the cooler climate, we have got an increase on both, which is nice to see. 5.5% on the Exynos and nearly 7% on the Snapdragon. So Snapdragon still winning quite comfortably there with an average score of 874,000. Exynos not too far behind, but still far enough that it does not win this test. But that is a ongoing occurrence in these tests, as we already know. So let's take a look at the stress test results here. So we can see August's update down here and September's up here. And we can see here that the September update does seem a lot more stable. You can see lots of dips and peaks here, but on the September update, it is staying at around the 75% mark here with a clock speed maximum of around, let's say about 1.5 gigahertz, 1.6 maybe if you push it a bit. So the clock speed is going down lower, but it is actually performing a lot better. So again, in the second test as well, we can see here that the performance is actually a bit worse off, which is the complete opposite as what we saw in August here. But we can see that the clock speed in August was just below 1.6 gigahertz, and here it's about 1.5 still. So I think that's why the performance is staying at around 55 to 60% here. So that's not very nice to see particularly. I'd much rather see a sort of higher performance with a slightly lower clock speed, but it swings and roundabouts really. You obviously decrease the clock speed, you're gonna get more performance from that speed that you get it set to. So again, it, the interesting part here is in the final test here. So you can see we do get this clocking up to about 1.55 maybe gigahertz. So that's really quite low, I'd say, compared to what we're gonna see on the Snapdragon shortly. But that does mean that the performance here is nearly 100%. So I don't think I've ever seen the Exynos performance this high, but that is obviously because of this clock speed here being so low. So speaking of the Snapdragon, and it's always a lot messier, these sort of graphs, but it is obviously a lot much better performance. But we do see quite a few dips here last month on the Core 7, way below the sort of 1.5 gig. But here in September, this is looking much better. This is well over two gigahertz for most of the test. Dipping down a bit here, below 2.0 to about 1.8, maybe 1.9. But yeah, overall that's a really nice performance and clock speed for the Snapdragon in the first test. We've got some slightly lower clocks here, as you can see in the second test, and the performance goes down to an average of around 70, I'd say, between 80 and 60 here. So not terrible, but it is a ton of bit worse there in its second test. And here we can see that the third test is looking really nice. We've still got some good clock speeds here going up to 2.5, 2.6 gigahertz here. And the performance is also still really good. So much better performance there from the Snapdragon. And moving on to the Slingshot Extreme test here. So there's been no changes in the winners of the average results here. So the Snapdragon still comfortably winning both the first two graphics tests and the Snapdragon is still winning the physics tests. They both have had a near 10% increase compared to last month, so that's good to see. And that's obviously probably due to the cooler climate, as I've already mentioned, that the temperatures are a lot lower in the UK at the moment than they were back in August.
Okay, so next up is the Wildlife Extreme stress test, and this is the only change this month actually, with the lowest loop now being awarded to the Snapdragon, whereas last month it went to the Exynos. So again, there's few and far between in this test, you can see, apart from the fact the best loop is obviously still quite easily won there by the Snapdragon at HN1, but the stability has increased a small amount there on the Exynos to over 71%, which is nice to see, but obviously that's because it's running at lower speeds or the performance of the GPU is obviously a bit lower or a lot lower potentially than the Snapdragon. So here are all of the results and yeah like I said the only thing that's changed really is the lowest loop score going across to the Snapdragon so they've now got a completely equal here number of wins each so six for the 2200 and six for the HN1 so there's still very little between them but obviously gamers will still want to go for the Snapdragon and everyone else will want to go for the Exynos, I'd say. You can see again, the battery life is still much, much better on the Exynos compared to the Snapdragon. So the Exynos ended with 40% battery remaining and the Snapdragon with 26. Now these did lose a bit more than the August test because my Antutu stress test actually ran for 45 minutes per turn. So because I reinstalled the Antutu benchmark application to try and get 9.4.8 to show, it did actually reset the default time back to 45 minutes, whereas I normally have it set to 15 minutes. But uh, it, either way, they obviously both still ran at the exact same tests at the same time. So it, it's still this sort of 14% difference between battery life here on each phone. So yeah, gamers definitely still go for the Snapdragon, but everyone else, I think you're probably safe to stick with the Exynos, assuming you like battery life. So let me know what your thoughts and comments are down below as always. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you again in the next video.